The following is an Ice on Mars presentation. September 5th. The man on the trail is dead and will need to be moved. It is a more difficult task than I would have guessed, and nearly impossible for a five foot four inch woman with no help and no gurney. I tried to drag him toward camp right after I found him this morning, but only succeeded in pivoting him and twisting his legs around each other horribly. Bodies look so wrong once they stop feeling pain. I never thought I would have so much experience with death, but I haven't cried over the loss of someone since the lighthouse. This man shit his pants before he died, and moving him made the smell worse. It will bring the animals in. Still no sign of Ira or Bill. So begins The Whistlers, this episode on... Dread Dialectic. Dread Dialectic. Hey everybody, this is Michael T. Bradley. And this is Skixmatics. And we are here for episode 14, which is going to be more kind of like a mini-sode, and I don't know if we'll actually do these every other episode forever down the line, but we're going to try to... A friend had a suggestion of trying to throw in bonus episodes uh, where we focused on short stories, just kind of shorter episodes here and there. If you have any comments, questions, feedback, uh, or suggestions for novels, novellas, or one specific short story out of a collection or online that you think would be really good for this, then drop us a line at dread.dialectic at gmail.com. Just make sure there exists a way for us to get there. Yeah, and as a note that I've made before, I'm not very good at reading things online. I decided to give this a shot just because I was pretty quickly sucked into this story. But after a while, my eyes were killing me, and I was like, oh, please, God, just end, even though I enjoyed it. But yeah, uh, feel free to let us know about whatever you'd like to hear our takes on, because we're friggin' fascinating. <laughs> yes, 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 we are. A plot synopsis. A group of people go to the Pacific Northwest to do some research on the mythology of these creatures that live there called the Whistlers. And I guess that's technically the name of the story. That's how I refer to it at the beginning, the Whistlers, as well, though they don't really have a specific name. They aren't heard from again, and this is a couple of the characters' journals that are found. It's framed as the the writer, or the guy making the post on Reddit, found these pages in a backpack that he bought at a yard sale. Um, right, then because of the backpack and because of the transcription on Reddit, uh, a different journal came to light, and so we get we get that as well. This is from the Reddit No Sleep Forum, and I'll, I'll link it in the description so that you can go check it out if you want to. One of the stipulations for writing in No Sleep is that you... Treat it like it's real in the conversation. Yeah. Trigger warnings? Nothing really stands out to me. Um, one character is kind of a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, there's... there's I, I, I can't think of anything, at least none of the, the common ones. So let's go ahead and go through our usual setup. So the good. Uh, what, what did you particularly like about this, Skix? It's good for what it is. It's it's a copy pasta essentially. Coffee pasta? Copy, like copy paste. Or oh. I'm sorry, a creepy pasta. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> creepy pasta. I know. I don't. I don't know copy pasta. Copy pasta is also a thing, but it's not this. So it, it's it's a retelling of a ghost story as if it were something someone really really experienced. It does a decent job. It creates mystery over the what the monsters are like. It starts kind of in the middle of things, so there's no explanatory, like, here's where we're going and why and what we're looking after, and, and here's the myth that we're following, which, as far as I know, was invented for the story. I've never heard of Whistlers. There is a Jethro Tull song by the name, but uh, unrelated, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Gets stuck in my head, though. Well, it did a decent job. The, the, the protagonist, writing in first person as is a journal, I think was interesting and believable. I'll be honest, I think this is the best thing that we've read for the podcast so far. I, I love this uh, so much. Oh, huh, okay. I, I mean, uh, is it a basic ghost story? Sure. I mean, it's like people get taken out one by one by this mysterious thing in the forest. That's pretty much what there is to it, but the way that, you know, quote-unquote Ruth describes her ordeal, I just found really fascinating. I thought the different ways the author approached her view on things, and then especially later when we see Bill's point of view, and it, it 
uh, showcases a lot of like uh, the ways that she was misunderstanding things or the lacunae that she left. I just, I really liked the way that Ruth described the effect of loneliness and the effect of being terrified nonstop and the effects that it had on her both physically and mentally and the way that she viewed people and it didn't seem kind of cookie cutter to me it seemed more fascinating and believably feminine it does i say i like her character even though i thought she was a dude when she was sleeping with bill and i was all like yes gay but... <laughs> and i also really like that it's essentially left as a mystery like it's 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 kind of creepy and it never gives you a direct answer and I think that was the right way to go with this sort of story. Sometimes that can leave me feeling frustrated and like the author just didn't care or whatever, but here I thought it worked really well. Uh, I agree. Let, let's go to the bad. Uh, what uh, wh what did you not like besides it being copy pasta? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I, I, I don't fault it for being creepy pasta. It, it just, it's like a subgenre of writing that doesn't grab me, though there are exceptions. I didn't like Bill. But I guess that's okay. I mean, characters don't have to be likable. I actually got really upset at the, I guess for want of a better word, love triangle aspect of things. That bugged me, both as someone reading and kind of in with the characters, uh, and as outside the story reading. It's like, this story didn't fucking need that. But I'm very harsh on love triangle and, and cheating stories. They've got to be really well written for me to be willing to put up with them and that's perhaps a quirk of mine but i think they're really overdone and really weakly done most of the time and i this one just it didn't fit it felt inserted to me i agreed in the beginning i thought kind of the way that they came together towards the end where they're just alone in that house and at that point it's not a triangle anymore because the husband is out of the picture i i, I thought at that point it worked but before that, I thought the writing made it work, but I also, like, as an editor, was like, you know, you made it work in the writing, but why bother putting it in? Yeah, it, it seemed a way to make both Bill and Ruth unsympathetic, yeah. you know? And, and Ira is never developed sufficiently as a character for me to really feel his descent as, as, as tragic as I believe it's supposed to be. And, and, and they cheated on him, and that... That was just mean. Bill's segment definitely gives Ira more character. I think it's kind of up to interpretation whether you're going to like or dislike him, but definitely he gets more uh, character well, in that segment. So. That's good, because he potentially would be the most interesting of the three. You know, I, I think Ruth and Bill were well-developed and good characters and believable, but Ira was the one going through the most shit. <laughs> That's likely to be interesting. But all, all we see is like sort of a almost cartoon style madness uh, popping out of the woods and going booga booga. <laughs> yeah, and Bill section we don't necessarily see like the before, but we at least find out why that's happened. There's more uh, depth to Ira though. Again, like I say, not um, y your mileage may vary on whether you like him more or hate him more because of it. So the ugly. Let's talk about the monster, the Whistlers, which. Yeah, as far as I know, aren't related to anything in the comments. People talk about, you know, what are the Whistlers? And, and people bring up different legends, and people uh, pontificated that it might be Wendigos uh, because of, you know, some similarities they had in the way that Wendigos, if they eat the flesh of someone, can uh, take their form. Everyone in Winter Forest is not a Wendigo. <laughs> <laughs> but that, you know, that seems to be what happened with Ira, and there's some other things, yada, yada, yada. But the, the legend isn't from there. But, okay, carry on. Yeah, this is a popular legend, at least, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think the author was obviously paying attention because later he puts in, I, I don't know if that's in the Ruth or the Bill section, but later he puts in a line that's like, I read on Wendigos to see if it's them, and it's not, and or, you know, it's, it's he, he basically makes it clear that, like, no, this isn't a Wendigo, this isn't a Skinwalker, this is, you know, this is something else, this is like a, a thing just native to the region. I, I thought that worked. I, I, I think it's like, you know, this reminded me a lot of Marble Hornets. Like, I found the whole idea of, I can't remember the site that originally did it, but, you know, the idea of, like, try to make a horror meme that will continue on and then right. they, you know whoever created slender man like uh, succeeded at that and i find that idea fascinating that slender man is pretty 
ubiquitous at this point in the culture in a lot of ways. Sure. And and so that, to me, seems fascinating, and I really liked Marble Hornets, at least for a while. I think scary stories and tall tales are part of being human. I think every culture probably does it, and some of those stories stick. Sure. In any case, you know, it's hinted at in, in Ruth's story, and then it's hinted even further in Bill's story that the Whistlers might actually be protecting the humans and keeping a larger monster away. So there's this, like, second layer of mystery on top of the layer of mystery. And, and again, I found that fascinating, and I thought this, much like the original Slenderman stuff, worked as a way to introduce possibly a pantheon of monsters without doing so much with it that it restricted other stories being told in that universe. Right. Which I, I thought was a really cool thing to do. I mean, I'm, I'm really curious if other people have written Whistler's universe stories because i don't understand reddit i was given a direct link to this and i just kept following the here is part two and then oh here's the here's bill's story you know but i can't navigate reddit at all i'm like a child in a department store just you know pulling things off shelves and annoying people so that, that was real vivid <laughs> <laughs> so would you recommend this to anyone skix uh Honestly, no. I feel so lukewarm about it. I, I can't think of who I'd recommend it to. All right. Okay. Fair enough. I I, I guess I would, as long as you know, uh, with the caveat that it's going to be like a lot of reading online. I think in general, online, it's it's even if I didn't have the eye issue, I think it would be really hard to keep focus on something for that long online. Like, I just had to kind of, you know, anytime a Facebook Messenger pop-up would come, I'd have to, like, just scroll it to the bottom because I'm like, no, if I if I deviate from this focus, I'm never going to make it through this. Uh, I, I read it mostly on my phone. Well, my phone has Facebook Messenger pop-ups, too. Yes, but I don't have friends. Well, that that's true. Mixed on that, next up, Highway to Hell by Rosemary Clement more and uh we're gonna do another short story after that and on we're gonna do a couple more online and then after that i hope to hell we're gonna like actually <laughs> do ones that won't kill my eyes but uh but yeah I'll, I'll we'll let you know what that one is at the end of the next episode and obviously if you have any feedback questions comments agree disagree if you think one of us is a big butthead let us know it's me it's me and also if you have anything that you'd like us to read let us know dread.dialectic at gmail.com until then this is michael t bradley and this is skixmatics and we are <laughs>